So this is my dog, Mac. I adopted him about seven years ago. He was a rescue down in Missouri. He was a bait dog, if you know what that is. On August 23rd, 2023, Mac lost the ability to walk. I rushed him to the vet. I had to carry him into the car. He was almost completely limp. Almost everyone thought that this was it. This was going to be the end. But I have good news. It's January 2024, and here he is. And I want to go through what I learned through this entire process about end-of-life treatment, how to make the right decision at the right time, and how to make sure that you're not rushing anything while also respecting your pet and making sure that your pet is going to have the best outcome possible. So first off, here's the good news. Mac can walk, no problem now. He still struggles a little bit, and as you can see in this video, he's able to get around, um, not quite the way he did when he was young, but he can still get around, uh, and right now he's not heavily medicated. Uh, but I'll describe all the medications as we go through this video um, that were attempted and also the ones that he's using currently. So here's the sequence of events. So the first thing I noticed was we went out for a walk that morning of the 23rd of August and he sort of was slower than usual but then when we came back in he lied down and didn't even want to get food. He wouldn't get up and it just seemed like something immediate had happened um, and it really didn't make any sense and he always wants to get food in the morning. So I went over and I was trying to help him you know move around and he just couldn't seem to move and when I was able to lift him up a little bit to try to get him to right himself and stand, his front left paw was completely lumped over and he couldn't stand on it at all. And he was struggling to put any weight on his body and he couldn't stand. So I carried him, he's about 80 pounds and he's definitely overweight and I know that and it's something that he struggled with since I got him and I've worked hard, but again, it's really hard to get him to lose weight and, and I don't know how else to describe it especially now that he's not as physically active as he used to be and he can't be as physically active anymore um, but effectively he couldn't get up it was total shock everybody in the family was very upset and so I carried him we went to the vet the vet didn't seem as concerned as I expected um, and it's probably because they see a lot of this uh, quite often with older dogs and older pets and their solution was, first of all, there wasn't really a diagnosis, which I don't blame them for that, but their solution was to use two things. One was Rimadyl, which is a non-steroidal uh, chewable tablet uh, for anti-inflammatory, anti so Rimadyl, which I've heard great things about for certain conditions, but uh, that one was one, and then Elevet um, CBD, which... I'm a little skeptical of CBD being a solution, but I also was not opposed to it. Both of them were very expensive, um, I'll say, getting it from the vet. And I gave the, him both of those, and there was no improvement whatsoever. He couldn't move, couldn't get up. Um, that first 24 hours was total chaos, and I would carry him outside and hold him up to be able to go to the bathroom. And he couldn't, he couldn't put any weight on it. On, he could basically stabilize with his legs straight down with me totally carrying his body weight. And then he didn't want to go to the bathroom because he wanted to go on his own terms. And he couldn't even go to the bathroom. So what we ended up doing as a solution was um, I got him a big bed. Uh, well, he had his beds, but I put the beds together. Um, and then I got a big shower curtain because he wouldn't go outside and he wouldn't go inside either because he knows he's not supposed to go inside. And basically, it would, it would have to come down to it being an emergency for him to just go to the bathroom on the shower curtain, and then I would basically mop it up. Um, he would be crying throughout the day. He would want to go outside, and he couldn't. Uh, so I would, I would bring him outside, and then he still wouldn't go to the bathroom. A few times he did go to the bathroom where it was just a complete emergency, and, and he would just go. Um, but it was, it was really dire. And the medication just didn't seem to be doing anything. If anything, there was no improvement on the uh, Rimadyl and Elevet uh, CBD. So I did call the vet and I said, hey, here's where we're at. And they said, okay, you know, keep trying the, the original medication. There wasn't really much more than that. So what I did is I started to do some research, obviously, and I started to reach, you know, out to people that I knew that had good vets. And I found that there was a home visit vet that my sister had used um, and that she thought was great. 
So we called her, and uh, what I will say is that the one diagnosis that I got the second time from the vet was that they thought that Mac had basically old dog disease. So it's not so much that they thought it was old dog disease, it was really that I had found that through my research and they said it's possible. And it's also known as canine idiopathic vestibular disease. It's a sudden non-progressive disturbance of balance. So they thought it could be old dog disease, uh, which many dogs recover from. Uh, and in this case, it didn't seem that there was going to be any recovery um, under that medication. So the home house vet comes out and did a full analysis of Mac and said, okay, well, if his front left isn't working, well, what's going on with his back left? Um, and that was the key. She realized that this was something potentially nervous because his back left did sort of function and then it, it completely stopped functioning. So she thought it was a nervous system issue where it was spreading down his spinal column. And she thought that we should try two things. One would be a, a low dose of prednisone uh, and then also gabapentin, which is a nervous system uh, drug. And so the gabapentin and the prednisone together, she thought would be a good way to start. Now this is about three days in and Mac couldn't walk, couldn't do anything uh, on his own and was just miserable. And that was when I started to research end of life. Um, you know, meanwhile, mentally, he's completely fine. And so that was the biggest struggle. But if he couldn't find a way to get up on his own eventually, I knew that that was going to have to be it. Um, so we get to this, you know, the medication isn't much. And we were, I think, doing only five milligrams of prednisone in the morning and five milligrams at night. And I asked the vet, like, hey, what are the maximums that, I, that we can try? Because this isn't getting better. We need something to, to occur. And so I sort of pushed that this is the last ditch effort and we need to try everything we can because this isn't, I can't let my dog live like this any longer or for much longer if this isn't going to improve. So she said, okay, we can go to 40 milligrams a day which I've read is still not even the maximum dose for an 80 pound dog, but we tried that. And there still wasn't much improvement over the course of the next 48 hours. So, you know, my friends and family were coming to the house and people started to say goodbye to Mac. Um, they wanted to, you know, see him and pet him one last time. And I'm getting choked up thinking about that right now. But um, that, was, that was really hard. Um, and I was basically had done all of the research of who in the local area could do an in-home euthanization because I didn't want to take him to the vet to do that. Uh, so there are people that will do an in-home euthanization so that you can be with your family, with your pet, and they can be in their happy place at home and, and then go to sleep, right? Uh, it's an incredibly hard thing to talk about and it's an incredibly hard thing for anyone to do but in the interest of the pet you have to I think at some point decide okay they, they can't go to the bathroom or let's say they can't eat thankfully he was able to eat um, but if they can't go to the bathroom on their own can't walk on their own can't eat on their own um, then it does get to a point where you have to make this decision that it's not in their best interest to continue on um, so it was a beautiful day that day and my sister was just there and she had to leave. Um, my mother was going out to a doctor's visit of her own. Um, and it was just me and Mac and it was just a beautiful sunny day. You know, August on Cape Cod, you, you know, you couldn't beat it. And Mac loves to go on the back or he did love to go on the back lawn and just look into the woods. So he loves that, right? So I said to my mother, I'm going to bring him out to the yard and I'm going to let him just look at, look at the woods like he always has and just enjoy being in the sun and looking at what his favorite place to sit was always in that one spot on the lawn, just experience that maybe just one last time. And so I carried him out and I set him on the ground and I was going to get more prednisone because I was approved to give him more. And I said, I don't want to overdose him on prednisone, but we're going to give him the recommended new higher dose to try to get him to recover and try our last ditch effort. 
And as I walk into the kitchen and I can see where he is on the lawn, I knew he wasn't going to be going anywhere. Um, he got up on his own and I couldn't believe it. He got up and he was able to basically limp about 10 feet to the woods. And I ran out and he was peeing on himself effectively and all over, but he was going to the bathroom and he had gotten up for the first time in more than five days. He got up on his own and I was just in complete shock. Um, so I got him off the ground and got him to be able to finish going to the bathroom. And then I carried him back by holding him under his chest and straddling him back to where he was sitting on the grass. Um, so sort of as if my arms were a sling, I held him and he was able to sort of walk-ish over and then I set him back down and I'm gonna go get more prednisone now. And so I run back inside to go get the prednisone and he gets back up again and goes back into the woods and now wants to poop. And I just couldn't believe it that he was able to do this. And so I ran back out and I got him and I helped him stand while he went to the bathroom and carried him back again. And I'll show you the video because I, I didn't take any videos during this entire process because I just didn't want to almost cheapen him and his existence by taking a video of it to, to document it for myself uh, or anything along those lines. I didn't really want a record of his worst time on, on earth. Um, and I just didn't, but I did want to take pictures of him just to be like, these are the last ones I'll ever have, um, and videos. And I just, you know, I just didn't do it. I didn't take one picture or video of him that entire time. And now I'm glad about that. But this video right here, I just had to let my family know and show them that he was able to walk. And so this is the video where he got up that after the second time going to the bathroom, he was able to walk back towards the house. Obviously, he, I had to carry him into the house. Uh, and as you can see, he's still limping and then he's walking on his front left paw backwards. But, oh my God, he was able to, to do this. And it looks like now he's actually potentially going to recover or at least get stable. And when I tell you I was crying, I can't even tell you how much joy I felt that he was able to do that because that was one of the necessary things in order for me to see that there could be a potential long-term recovery is that he had to be able to walk on his own and he had to be able to go to the bathroom on his own. That was still not yet determined that he would eventually be able to do that, but he was able to do at least a few steps on his own already. So just, you know, I called everybody I know and said, Max walking, oh my God, you know, this is the greatest. Um, and so from there, I bring him inside and I call the, the vet, her name is Joan, and the house visit vet. And I said, hey, this is amazing. You know, Mac just got up and, and stood for the first time in five days. And so we go through all the solutions and sort of how to continue the medication, the levels and the dosage that would be needed in order to, to keep him stable and give him enough so that we could start weaning the amounts down again. Um, and so just a, a joyous moment, you know, for everybody that was involved in this, in that, you know, I called the original vet too, and I, I told him sort of what happened. And I think Joan was right. She, it was a nervous system situation where, cause now his back left was starting to work much better again. And it was sort of like coming back away from his tail and his legs in the back and starting to get better in the front. Um, and it was just it was remarkable. Um, and so we're just looking at it like, okay, this was probably, it was either some sort of a nervous system infection, we think, or potentially it could have been some sort of a stroke. We're, we're really still not 100% sure, but the one thing is clear that the original vet and others, rightly so, I think, said, you know, let's not put him on a steroid, which is a more severe and, and has more impact on the, the dog. Uh, let's do things that are non-steroidal first. Uh, but but when it came time to, to really like try the steroids, uh, the, no, the original vet wasn't really w willing to do that. And that could have been, could have been it. And honestly, if Mac didn't get up, if I didn't take him into the yard that day and he didn't feel the sun and for whatever reason, get up on his own, I don't know if he would have done that inside the house. 
I don't know if he would have actually gotten up inside the house on his own to show that he could because he was so demoralized. And so taking him out, he showed that he had potential to, to live. And without that moment and without that sunny day, I don't know if I ever would have been able to know that he had that in him and that there was a potential path to recovery. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll never know. But I can tell you for sure that him getting up that day showed that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and from that point forward, we did everything we could, and I got him a bunch of what we did around the house, and you'll see on, on the floor, he couldn't walk on a hardwood floor or tile. So we basically plastered the floor with carpets and rugs, well, with rugs, so that, and we taped them together. So effectively, wherever he's going to walk, which is basically it was walking to my room and then walking to the food and the water and walking to his bed, had to be fully covered with, uh, with rugs and all taped together because he'd kick them out. Uh, but now he has basically a runway and he has access to all of his favorite plot places in the house. And, and basically from there, he started to make incremental progress. Um, we ended up reducing the amount of prednisone and I actually took him off the prednisone for a few days. And this is probably about a month in, um, because he had made such progress and I'll show videos obviously of him walking now. And it's not ever going to be the same, but it, it's, it's so much better. Uh, so I had actually taken him off the prednisone completely. And you know, after about a week, it became clear that he needed some level of prednisone because his deterioration was severe. Um, not severe like the original time, but it was to a point where he was struggling and, it, and he was in pain. So I'll tell you right now, the current regimen is that he's on five milligrams in the morning and that's it. So he takes one pill every morning of prednisone and the negative effects of the steroid is that he has to go to the bathroom more. He's much more hungry and he wants to eat constantly. Um, and as you can tell, he's, he was already overweight, but now he's even more overweight than he was, which I'm working on. But at the same time, he is able to get around and he's very happy and he doesn't seem to be in pain. Um, and I can't tell you 100% that he's not in any pain, but he's getting around and he's eating and he's happy. And so far, the progress has been pretty good. From this point forward, I'm going to keep him on the medication. Um, and we're going to effectively look at, you know, how does he act? How does he show if he's in pain? Um, and is he able to do the normal things that a dog would want to do to have a good life? And it's never going to be like when he was five when I got him. Um, but being on some level of steroid does impact his health. And I know that at this point, there's six months of, of his life that has been good. He can walk all the way around the block now. Um, we can go up and down hills. He can really do the things that he used to do. Um, and so that quality of life is what... I want him to have and to maintain. And then as far as if that starts to deteriorate, even with higher levels of medication, that's the point where I think I'll have to make another very hard decision. Um, but again, there is some truth to doing what's right for the, the pet. There's all the truth in doing what's right for the pet, but also don't necessarily rush the decision as far as evaluate the options that are out there. And, I know it's going to sound wrong to some people to say, trust your gut in this, but do that and trust your pet. Um, and you never want your pet over medicated and you never want to string them out longer than they should be on earth, but, um, or have them living in pain. But I think that there, there are ways that you can go about this and evaluate multiple pathways, consult with multiple veterinary services um, to make sure that you're getting all of the options on the table at the right time so that you know that you're trying everything you can and that your pet is getting the opportunities that it needs to to show you that it has your the ability to live and live a good life and and if your pet isn't showing that and I know there's no way to really pin that down but if your pet isn't showing you those things then um, 
then I think it becomes more clear. And in this case, it was clear to me that Mac really did want to continue on. Um, and there's no template to say this is exactly right or wrong. And there's going to be, I'm sure, critics in the comments and saying that this was the wrong thing. And But in the end, he's had another six months with with all of us that we have cherished so much. Um, and at any time, it could change. And it's sort of... The way I'm looking at it is that he got a second chance at, at, at being with us. We got a second chance at him being with us. And every day is just a gift. Um, and I, I'm very cognizant of the fact that that could change at any time and that I don't anticipate this miraculous recovery to always just happen. Um, so I'm going to be very mindful of how I treat any future issues with him to make sure that I'm not holding on too long. Um, the other thing that I did to make sure that he was in at least the best, had the best chance, I got him a harness that I could lift him with to get him up and off the ground. And I also got him a ramp. So to go inside and outside right away, I got him a ramp so that he only goes up the ramp and then just one step to get into the house and that's it. So the impact on his joints um, and the ups and downs are very minimal. So he's basically got that one small two-step ramp. And then as he's going up and down the ramp, I hold him, or I used to have to hold him with the harness. Now he doesn't even use the, the harness uh, because he almost runs up and down the ramp. Uh, I'm going to continue to use the ramp. But the fact that he really didn't need the harness anymore to get up, and he didn't need the harness to stabilize going up and down the ramp, so he's back on his normal collar and um, and still using a ramp. But in the end, what I'm really trying to say is trust your vet and trust in yourself and trust your pet. Um, but get as many bits of information from different sources as you can uh, by, you know, not just going with one vet. And I know this all costs money. None of this is free. Um, but have multiple opinions. Um, and then really look to see, is a change of environment going to help your pet show you that they have potential to recover? Um, you know, take your pet to a park and see if they can't walk, will they get up to walk? Um, and in some cases, it would be okay to move the pet. In other cases, maybe not. Um, but if you can't even move your pet to a new environment to see, then it's probably clear. Um, the other thing I'll say is that the medications... Obviously, I don't like having the pet on, having Mac on medications, but it's important to have that because um, without it, I don't think he'd be where he is right now. Um, so the thing on medications is that when I got the medication through the vet, it was extremely expensive. Um, and just like all things, there's other ways to get the medication and the house visit uh, veterinarian was able to get me prednisone at quite a low cost compared to what I would have paid online and what I would have paid to the vet. And there's nothing wrong with the vet, um, you know, with an office, but they have to pay for the office, they have to pay for the heat. Um, so just simple economics is that if somebody has access that is certified to be a veterinarian and they have access to the same quality of drugs and they can get them to you for cheaper, um, I would recommend that. So. That was another thing that I learned is that there are ways to get these drugs in a more cost-effective way that are just as, as high quality as the things you would get from the vet. And I know there's a thousand angles at this problem, but I wanted to make this video so that other people at least could even just understand a little bit about the struggle that you might be about to go through or that you've already been through or that it's also okay to feel totally lost in that moment because that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. And I also know that it's gonna happen again because no one lives forever and Mac isn't gonna live forever. Um, so this will happen again. And when it does, I need to at least use the skills that I've learned this time around to to do as, as best as I can to make sure that Mac is getting the right treatment. He has the ability to show me if he's willing to continue um, and not really listen to other people that aren't veterinarians um, and really trust that your pet's going to show you um, if it can uh, and don't string the pet along too far with 
being heavily medicated because that I don't think is good for the pet either. Uh, but those are the things that I learned. But that's my advice for folks. Um, and I don't typically make content about dogs or about pets or about this topic, but I wanted to share this because maybe there's one or two people out there that are looking at the scenario where they don't know what to do and they don't believe that it's the end of life time uh, for their pet, but they don't really have anyone to at least hear what they went through or actually think about how, how could I go about this in a better way to make sure that I'm making the right decision. Because um, for me, six months more with Mac has been life changing for me because I wasn't anywhere close to ready uh, when the initial time happened. And in a way, I'm almost more able to accept that it's going to come now at some point. And I'm going to have a much better way to approach how to go about end of life with Mac the second time around because I went through it and almost had to to do it. And I, I was only a couple of days away from what we were scheduling for the end of life uh, euthanization. So um, if you like this video, please leave a comment and give a like and um, and hopefully it helps some people. And it, to any critics, again, I'm, I'm not a veterinarian and I don't know everything, but um, I hope that this is helpful to people out there and I could be wrong, but I, I think that the way that I went about it, at least to me, felt like I gave Mac a chance. And I also was true to how I felt in my gut. And Mac, in this case, recovered. And I'm so appreciative and thankful. Um, and every day is just a gift that he's here. Um, so thanks so much for watching. And again, hopefully this was helpful to somebody. And if not, <laughs> you go ahead and turn it off. Thank you, guys.